to get your attention right now, so. Um, I'd like to welcome everyone here to Fins and Tails, and uh, more importantly, I'd like to wel um, welcome you all to this meet and greet to meet a great candidate, Elizabeth Warren. For those who don't know who I am, my name is Geraldo Lisi. I was the former state representative of this district. Uh, the district that... district that has a history of going either red or blue just recently went red. In 2010, it went red. So what we want, and especially in the special election, we saw that. So that's what today's about. Today's not only about meeting our candidate, it's about building our grassroots as well. Reaching out to our fellow neighbors and friends and letting them know that we have a candidate who cares about the middle class, who cares about the people, and that's what we're all excited about. Because we have a, we have a many uh, several other candidates who are going to be running in November, and we just want to make sure this section, not only Worcester County but the whole state of Massachusetts, has this big wave of blue instead of red. So that's so I'm excited about this. Section. I want to. Um, I just want to recognize uh, several people who are in the room right now. We have Representative Ann Goby from Spencer.
we have a uh, state committee person, um, town council member, uh, town council and uh, Southbridge Democratic Chair, Larry McDonald, who's here. We have state committee and chair of the Sturbridge Democratic Committee, Laura Jetty. We have state committee person and chair of the Spencer uh, Democratic Committee, Bill Shemek. We have um, town councilor and candidate for the state representative of the 6th Worcester District, Kathleen Walker. And I think it's fair to say that I am endorsing him. <laughs> Should be an Austin state rep this year, right? Um, we have uh, at um, state committee person and DC uh, DNC Diane Sachs. <laughs> and from local 107, we have several people from local 107, but we have Chris Mad Malioli from local 107. <laughs> I'm excited about introducing my next friend, who's been a great supporter, a great, a great friend of mine. He's been a Democrat all his life. When I talk about blue, you can't find anybody bluer than this gentleman right here. I, Only I, in America. <laughs> <laughs> He's been in politics for a long time. I've had the opportunity sitting at his kitchen table on a Sunday morning, just talk about politics, old-fashioned politics, how government works. Maybe I get so educated by him, and I just look forward to sitting down on, on Sunday mornings with him and having coffee, because he he's a wealth of knowledge, and, and he's just a, a true good friend and a true Democrat. And I'd love to welcome Sheriff Flynn. Thank you. 
how grateful I am to the sheriff for your guidance, uh, for all you have done for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and particularly for the people of the area. Thank you so much, Mr. Right. Chairman. And to Anne and to Geraldo, thank you so much for all you do and for helping put this together. Thank you very much. spend the time we have here together, what I'd like to be able to do is I see some old friends, but I also see some new friends. So I thought I'd spend a few minutes introducing myself and just tell you a little bit about why I'm in this race. And then what I'm hoping that nobody will tell me I can't do this, I'd like to be able to stay and shake hands with every single one of you until we, we shut this place down. <laughs> uh, that's what I want to do. You know, I am learning though, I now double date. Uh, I used to think that meant, right, it just means we keep stacking these things up. So I've been everywhere today. I apologize a little for being in um, a somewhat less than fresh state, but um, I've been having fun across the state today. That's what, that's, that's been out there. You know, every chance I get, I'm out talking about working families. And I talk about working families because I came from a working family. Uh, my dad uh, sold carpeting, he sold fencing. He ended up as a maintenance man. Uh, my mom worked the phones at Sears. That's how it was that we managed to keep making mortgage payments, even during tough times. All three of my brothers served in the military. My oldest brother, 288 combat missions in Vietnam. He was career military, yes sir. And my second brother, John, uh, after he got out of the military, he worked construction all his life. When he could get the job, he was a crane operator and a proud member of the AFL-CIO. And uh, <laughs> proud to be here. Making me especially proud to be here today and to thank the Carpenters for all of their help in setting this up. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. And my third brother, my brother David, uh, he was the one who struck out, started a small business when it didn't succeed, Started another one. Could not imagine an America where he wasn't out there trying to live by his wits every single day. Those are my three brothers, always known as the boys, to distinguish them from the baby sister. I started working when I was nine. Um, it was totally opportunistic. Family across the street had a new baby. New baby had colic. I was in business. <laughs> For 35 cents an hour, I would have rocked that baby all night long. <laughs> I started waiting tables at 13, I got married at 19, and at 20, I graduated from a public university. Can we hear it for America's public university? <laughs> and as soon as I graduated, I started teaching in public school. Can we hear it for public school? <laughs> I worked with special needs kids, taught in elementary school. My daughter Amelia was born when I was 22. And here's where this story takes a hitch, because I thought that was going to be my life forever. I hauled off and decided I was going to go to law school. Now, I went to a public law school, which helped a lot on the tuition. But a big issue for me was child care. Uh, to get Amelia, whose second birthday was my first day of law school, to get her into the daycare program that I could afford, she needed to be, here was the term they kept using, dependably potty trained. <laughs> um, so I just want to say, I am here today courtesy of three bags of M&Ms. <laughs> That's how I made it. <laughs> I love 
law school. Law school is fun. But it's always been woven together with family. And I graduated from law school nine months pregnant, which in those days meant 100% unemployable. But you work with what you got. So I took the bar, I hung out a shingle, and I practiced law out of my living room with two little babies underfoot, one of whom was dependably potty trained. <laughs> one was not. Um, uh, and I liked law practice. But somewhere it was written that I was meant to be a teacher. And so I went back into teaching. I traded the little kids of elementary school for the much taller kids of law school. And I've always taught about families, uh, about small businesses, about economic success and failure, success and failure, what causes one, what causes the other. And I taught at five universities around the country. Um, and then nearly 20 years ago right now, my husband Bruce and I moved here to Massachusetts. Now we moved here for two reasons. The first, Bruce was born and raised here. His mom and dad were born and raised here. They were still alive then. His brother and sister raising their family. It was a chance for us to live near family. And that mattered a lot to us. The second reason is I got a great job offer. And it is how I think of the arc of my life. I am the daughter of a maintenance man who ended up as a professor at Harvard Law School. America is truly a great country. Now, I tell that story every chance I get, and I'll tell you why I tell it. I tell it partly because I want you to know what is written on my heart, what does not change no matter what. I tell it partly because I want you to know how deeply grateful I am for the opportunities that were given to me. And I tell it partly because I'm very worried that mine's a story that is embedded in time. Because I grew up in an America that was still investing in kids, that was still investing in education. And I fear that we have turned in another direction. You know, I think about what's happened to America over the last 30 years. And I'll just focus on one piece of opportunity, the piece I got, and that is education, what we were able to do. A young person who makes the decision today to try to go to college and does it, is willing to do it in the cheapest possible way. You know, live at home, live with Aunt Harriet, live in a, uh, you know, a group house with nine other people, eight of whom do not know how to close a kitchen cabinet door or wash a dish. <laughs> Um, borrow the books, but you've got to pay tuition and fees. And tuition and fees, I just, just want to make sure everybody knows this, for a kid going to a state school today, adjusted for inflation, have a, 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 young, a young person today pays 350% of what her mom or dad paid 30 years ago. Think about that. That's not how we build opportunity. And we are here. We are here in the very week that my Republican opponent, Scott Brown, voted to double the interest rates on student loans. That is not how we build a future. We can do better than that. here at a time when this country is trying to recover from the greatest economic blow since the Great Depression. And yet the people who broke this economy have still not been held accountable. <laughs> Instead, we learned just in the last day that J.P. Morgan Chase lost $2 billion on something that the CEO describes as sloppy practices at precisely the same moment that the Wall Street banks are spending millions to lobby Washington to weaken the financial regulations. Let me tell you, I believe we need a tough cop on the beat 
to make sure no one steals your purse on Main Street and no one steals your pension on Wall Street. to describe how this rolls forward. But for me, what this election is all about is about whose side you stand on. The Republicans have offered a vision of America. And let me just boil it down for you. It's a vision that says, I got mine. The rest of you are on your own. Yeah. Wrong. Wrong. Our vision of America is that we all work together to make the investments, to create the right conditions so every kid has a chance to make it in this country. That's the kind of people we are. <laughs> Let no one fool you. We, when we read that General Electric pays zero in taxes at precisely the same moment, that the Republicans are saying, protect those tax breaks, but college kids are going to have to take on more debt and pay more for that debt in order to get an education. They're saying seniors may have to learn to live on less, that there's no money for summer programs. Understand, they're not making a statement of economics. This is not a statement of finance. This is a statement of values. And we need to decide what kind of a people we are and what kind of a country we are trying to build. That's what this election is about. So I want to say to you, one more time, please vote for me. <laughs> before, but I can learn. <laughs> I can learn. So I want to say to you, I need your help. I can't do this alone. Because the kind of change we need to make is not to get one person, one more person on the inside in Washington, where the lobbyists are still calling the shots. We're going to have to run the outside game ourselves. And what that means is not only an election, it means we got to make the wind blow in the right direction. And the way that happens is with the people in this room. I'm counting on you, ElizabethWarren.com, in case you haven't done that one yet. You will never be lonely again. Get on our email list. <laughs> but it is true. It's about knocking on doors. It's about making phone calls. It's about standing in front of the grocery store. It's about talking to the people next to you when you're pumping gas. But it's about our future. And it's about our kids' future. And so here's what I promise. I'm not in this alone, but here's what I can tell you I'll do from the lead position. In the time that I run for office, and if I am blessed to be your senator the time I serve, I promise you I will work my heart out and I will fight until we win. Thank you all. Thank you.